Good afternoon and welcome to our live coverage of the latest mission from Cape Canaveral. I'm Stephen Young and I'll be providing our commentary for the duration of this coverage. We're broadcasting from the Spaceflight Now News Bureau here at the Kennedy Space Center. Will Robinson-Smith is on assignment in Houston. He's at the pre-flight briefings for the first crewed flight test of Boeing's Starliner capsule. That mission is currently targeted for early May and uh, we're expecting Will to uh, come back uh, fully educated about the uh, mission and uh, ready for our coverage and there'll also be some uh, excellent uh, video packages that uh, he'll be gathering during that trip. So stay tuned for that. This afternoon, uh, Adam Bernstein is operating the cameras here at the press site, and Michael Kane is also out in the field to capture the launch. In the center of your screen, you're looking at the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket on Space Launch Complex 40. It's the first time we have seen a Dragon capsule atop a Falcon 9 in four years. This is uh, also the first time a second generation Dragon spacecraft has launched from this particular pad. SpaceX recently completed and certified the crew access tower and arm that you see on the right side of the Falcon 9 rocket. That access arm provides the access for both the uh, crews that might fly on future Crew Dragon flights, but also for teams who load supplies aboard the capsule, the so-called late load supplies that uh, include fresh food and uh, scientific experiments that uh, require a very short time between the loading aboard the capsule and uh, the journey to the International Space Station. We're also getting live views from our friends Chuck Briggs and Pete Costins. Uh, this view is coming from uh, Chuck's camera. He's uh, located across the river from the uh, launch pad. And uh, you can clearly see that newly installed crew access arm in this particular image.
SpaceX is targeting a liftoff of 4.55 p.m. Eastern Time. This will um, be uh, 20.55 UTC for our viewers joining us from around the world. If you'd like to support our coverage of the space program, please hit the like button and click subscribe so you get notifications. That way you won't miss any of our live streams. Also, please share this stream. It helps more people find our live coverage and everything else going on with our channel. We can't do this without uh, the support of our members and viewers. And uh, we want to thank everyone who's made a contribution to fund our coverage. We're about 20 minutes away from the point in the countdown in which the launch director will uh, give their go for the start of propellant load for this afternoon's launch. As this is a uh, NASA mission, we uh, hope to have mission audio and we should be able to uh, listen in on the countdown milestones, starting uh, with the uh, launch director's uh, poll and go for launch. SpaceX is running this countdown from its Hangar X facility at the Kennedy Space Center. That's also where the uh, Falcon 9 boosters are refurbished and prepared for flight. SpaceX will also have support for this launch uh, from their control rooms at their headquarters in Hawthorne, California. NASA's mission control in Houston will also be monitoring events as uh, this uh, Falcon 9 is carrying the uh, Dragon bound for the International Space Station. And uh, just a reminder, if you'd like to help us and improve and expand our coverage of the space program, we would love it if you would consider making a donation through YouTube's Super Chat feature or by becoming a member of our YouTube channel. Membership grants you access to our special members-only videos as well as discounts in our online shop.
So today's launch uh, once again is the first time that the uh, Dragon 2 spacecraft has uh, lifted off from Pad 40. The uh, very first Falcon 9 carried the very first Cargo Dragon prototype from this pad almost uh, 24 years ago. Uh, sorry, almost 14 years ago. And Dragon 2 has returned to uh, its uh, original nest here at Cape Canaveral at this pad with the uh, construction of the crew access arm. And uh, my colleague, Will Robinson Smith, now reports on uh, the work that took place to uh, get this launch pad ready for Dragon flights once more. Those who tune into a SpaceX launch will more often than not see a Falcon 9 rocket launch from here, Space Launch Complex 40. Out of the 310 Falcon 9 rockets that have launched as of March 15th, more than half launched from this pad. Missions ranged from elaborate telescopes like the European Space Agency's Euclid, Four power engines and liftoff, to Earth-observing spacecraft like NASA's PACE mission, but the structure beside the rocket seen during the most recent launches opens up a new world of opportunities for SpaceX and its customers, mostly NASA. The crew access tower at Pad 40 is similar to what's in place over at Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center. The one at Pad 40 will now allow SpaceX to launch Dragon missions from both of its Florida-based launch pads. It gives us the flexibility that if there's ever a, a traffic conflict on 39A and two missions have to launch at the same time and one of them's a Dragon, now we can move over to LC-40 and, um, and prioritize both of those missions. Over the course of 2023, SpaceX began moving tower segments out to Slick 40 and stacking the more than 70 meter tall tower. One of the last big additions came on November 6, 2023, when SpaceX hoisted the all-important crew access arm into place. This, of course, would provide a pathway for astronauts and launch teams to be able to reach the Dragon spacecraft prior to fueling the rocket. Prior to the Crew-8 launch, NASA leadership talked about the importance of bringing more cargo and crew capabilities into the fold. We wouldn't have guessed this 10 years ago uh, here, out here at KSC, but what's become one of the biggest constraints to launching is pad availability, just because business is booming here at, here at the Space Coast and at, at Kennedy with not just SpaceX, but all the, all the folks launching. Uh, and so bringing 40 online just gives us more flexibility to continue our primary mission. And because we have the potential to launch crew from 40, we're going to put it through the same exact same certification process that we did 39A to make sure that it is safe and has the NASA stamp of approval before we put our crew on it. Also ahead of the launch of the Crew-8 mission, SpaceX tested the new emergency egress system at Pad 40. In the run-up to the Commercial Resupply Services, or CRS-30 mission, SpaceX released first-person video of what the inside of the slide looks like, showing how the escape system works. Sarah Walker, the director of SpaceX's Dragon Mission Management, says certifying this system was the final piece of the puzzle before launching second-generation Dragon spacecraft from Pad 40. We ran a number of tests this week in a lot of different configurations, including incapacitated crew member. Could you send a, sh a stretcher down this, um, essentially a slide? We looked at, in a spacesuit, what if the spacesuit is a little bit wet because of a fire response uh, up on the pad? And so, um, yeah, that was the last piece of the system to come together. Um, it's checked out now. I think also this week we got the final external approvals as well. And liftoff of the Falcon 9 rocket and Cargo Dragon. The last time a Dragon spacecraft bound for the ISS launched from Slick 40 was SpaceX's CRS-20 mission on March 7, 2020. And earlier this week, a Dragon 2 spacecraft was brought into launch position for the first time atop a Falcon 9 rocket here at this pad. The crew access arm also swinging into place for the first time to support a Dragon 2 mission. Time will tell if NASA and SpaceX decide to fly the Crew-9 mission from this pad, or if another group of astronauts will have that distinction of becoming the first Crew Dragon to soar from Pad 40. Reporting for Spaceflight Now, I'm Will Robinson-Smith. The uh, countdown clock now at 
T minus 48 minutes and 24 seconds. We're taking a look at uh, Space Launch Complex 40 from the roof of SpaceX's payload processing facility. This is uh, one of the uh, isolated views that SpaceX is providing to us for this launch. As you can see from this uh, image, the conditions here at the Florida spaceport are looking ideal for a liftoff of the Falcon 9 with the Cargo Dragon spacecraft aboard. The 45th Weather Squadron, based uh, here at Cape Canaveral, uh, put out a forecast yesterday in which they uh, predicted there was a 90% chance of acceptable conditions for launch there. Their only concerns were the thick cloud layer rule and the cumulus cloud rule. However, uh, they usually throw in uh, something even when uh, conditions are looking uh, excellent uh, because there's there's always that tiny chance that uh, one of those rules will get broken. Uh, so uh, not uh, much to worry about, at least uh, at ground level. However, um, the upper level wind uh, le uh, conditions are uh, a possible risk today and uh, were listed in the forecast as being low to moderate risk. So uh, they will be keeping an eye on that. There's various weather balloons that are launched from the uh, Space Force station here that monitor those upper level wind conditions and uh, any sudden change in direction or speed of those winds can present a problem. So uh, that is always monitored for every launch from here at the Cape. T minus 45 minutes and counting. So let's take a look at the countdown timeline for today's cargo resupply mission. Sorry about that, our graphic intruding a little bit on our countdown timeline. So at the T minus 38 minute mark, 
the uh, we should hear the uh, results of the go no go poll from the launch director that time is not set in stone the uh, launch director might give that go uh, a little earlier than that or a little later if the go is given the uh, propellant load will start at the T minus 35 minute mark kerosene will be loaded on the first and second stages also, liquid oxygen will be pumped aboard the first stage. With 30 minutes left to go, the first stage helium load begins. This is important because the helium gas is used to pressurize the propellant tanks uh, to keep the uh, propellants flowing through into the engines. The uh, loading of uh, cryogenic helium into the storage tanks on the second stage begins at T minus 26 minutes. At about T minus 23 minutes, uh, we should uh, hear a call that the second stage kerosene load has been completed. At T minus 20 minutes and 50 seconds, the strong back chill down process begins. We'll see that process underway with the so-called big vent, which uh, begins at about uh, 20 minutes and 20 seconds. That process of chilling down the feed lines in the strong back uh, clears the way for the start of the second stage liquid oxygen loading at the T minus 16 minute mark. Next up, at uh, T minus seven minutes, the chill down of the nine Merlin engines will get underway. This involves flowing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the plumbing and turbo pumps. This will protect those engines from the risk of thermal shock and damage during the startup sequence. About six minutes prior to launch, the first stage kerosene RP-1 tank should be full. The Dragon spacecraft will transition to internal power at the five minute mark. Then at T minus four and a half minutes, we'll see the strong back begin to retract from the Falcon 9 vehicle. It will recline to an angle of about one and a half degrees, leaning back ever so slightly from the Falcon 9, where it will stay until liftoff. Then at liftoff, that strong back will pull back in a more rapid fashion to clear the way for the vertical climb of the Falcon 9 off the launch pad. In the final minutes of the countdown, the loading of liquid oxygen aboard the first stage and the second stage will conclude. At this point, the Falcon 9 will be fully loaded with 1 million pounds of propellants. The uh, propellant tanks will be brought up to uh, flight pressure and the control of the countdown will be handed over for the final 60 seconds from the ground sequencer to the Falcon 9's onboard computers. We should hear the call from the SpaceX launch director to verify their final go for launch. And the engine ignition command will be issued at T minus three seconds. If all nine Merlin 1D engines ignite and are healthy, the flight computer will give the command to re release the hold down clamps and the Falcon 9 will lift off at T zero.
We're approaching the uh, T-minus 38 minute mark. This is the point in the countdown where we should hear the go from the launch director. We're not sure if uh, NASA is uh, piping through that audio yet, but we'll uh, listen in and hopefully we'll hear something. And although we're not hearing the countdown loops at the present time, uh, you can hear um, the sound of venting at the launch pad. We are uh, getting audio from SpaceX's uh, cameras at the pad. Can hear some venting there. can see the signs of uh, vapors forming on the ground support equipment. T minus the launch auto sequence has started. T minus 35 minutes and counting, and you heard the call there that the auto sequence has started, which means the starter propellant load is underway. With the uh, start of propellant load, we will start to see the buildup of uh, a frost ring and vapors around the first stage of the vehicle. want to thank Aerospace Rocketry for their uh, $20 Super Chat. Your uh, donations uh, help us uh, bring this coverage. We very much appreciate your support.
The booster flying today is uh, tail number 1080 in the SpaceX fleet. It will be making its sixth journey into space. It's not the first time it has delivered cargo to the, or has made a trip to the International Space Station. Let's take a look at the flight history of this booster. Its first mission was the Axiom 2 private, privately uh, funded mission, a chartered flight to the International Space Station. It was uh, commanded by uh, former NASA astronaut Peggy Whitson. So that was the uh, inaugural flight for this booster back uh, in May last year. It then went on to launch the European Space Agency's Euclid uh, telescope. This telescope which is uh, studying dark matter and uh, bringing some uh, incredible images of the universe. It uh, recently encountered some problems with uh, a small buildup of ice on the instruments of the uh, spacecraft, but they appear to have uh, resolved that problem, so that mission uh, is proceeding as planned. Following that, uh, this booster uh, carried out a uh, couple of Starlink missions, uh, Starlink 6-11 and 6-24. It uh, was then back on duty for uh, Axiom, flying that company's third commercial crew to the space station back in January of this year. Now less than 28 minutes to the launch of the Falcon 9 and the Cargo Dragon 2 spacecraft. Liftoff remains targeted for 4.55 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. The uh, loading of cryogenic helium is uh, now getting underway. That begins with the first stage, and in a few minutes, the second stage helium load will begin. Once again, that helium is used to pressurize the propellant tanks of the Falcon 9. Currently, liquid oxygen is being loaded onto the first stage, and we can see the signs of venting as that uh, or vapors forming around the outside of the vehicle as the humid Florida air comes into contact with the cold metal of the fuselage. They are also loading kerosene on the first and second stages. That kerosene load should be nearing completion on the second stage. This Falcon 9 will be uh, departing from Cape Canaveral on a uh, trajectory heading to the northeast. And uh, we'll show you a little, a little bit later that trajectory that the Falcon 9 will take. But uh, there's a chance if you live up the eastern seaboard of the US, you might be able to catch a glimpse. Uh, this um, launch time is probably not the best for uh, viewing further downrange, but uh, there's always a chance you might get to see the uh, Falcon 9 in flight if you live to the north.
want to thank our member, Calistia Lee, who uh, suggests uh, hitting the thumbs up button. She says it's free and an easy way to support this channel. And uh, we certainly appreciate uh, any support you can give us by uh, clicking the like button or uh, subscribing and uh, hitting the bell to get notifications of when we go live. In a few moments, we will see the so-called big vent from the strongback structure at pad 40. This is the chill down of those feed lines that run up that lattice-like structure that you can see in this view from inside the launch pad area. Those feed lines are cooled down prior to the start of uh, propellant load of the liquid oxygen into the second stage. And there we can see the start of that vent beginning. Stage two, RP-1 load complete. And we also have confirmation that the loading of 
rocket grade kerosene RP-1 aboard the second stage has been completed. Here's a view of uh, the big vent underway from our friend Chuck Briggs. Can also see that vent underway in our cameras here at the Kennedy Space Center press site. Stage two lock load has started. And we have confirmation from SpaceX launch control that the loading of liquid oxygen aboard the second stage of the Falcon 9 is now underway. Countdown clock is approaching the T minus 16 minute mark. Liftoff remains scheduled for 4.55 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I want to thank Christopher Jones for a $2 super chat. Thank you for your support. Let's take a look at the uh, trajectory of this mission. So you're looking at Space Launch Complex 40 from a satellite view. Once again, this is the uh, first time that uh, SpaceX has launched a Cargo Dragon 2 from this pad. The first generation Cargo Dragons did fly from here for many years. Coming out of uh, 
the launch pad. The rocket will head to the northeast, targeting uh, a rendezvous with the International Space Station. Meanwhile, the first stage, uh, indicated by the red line here, will uh, perform a boost back burn to essentially perform a U-turn in the sky to uh, reverse direction and head back towards a landing here at Cape Canaveral. It will touch down at landing zone one, which is uh, located uh, close to the, uh, the point of the Cape here. Previously, uh, it was not possible for the uh, second generation Dragon vehicles to return to uh, the launch site and they had to land on the drone ship, but uh, recent uh, performance upgrades now enable the Falcon 9 to return to the launch site, which eliminates quite a bit of time in the refurbishment of the vehicles. I want to thank Dale Pennington for their $2 Super Chat and also welcome Southern Torian uh, to the pad leader level. Once again, we can't bring this coverage to you without the support of our members and viewers. And uh, we want to give a big thanks to everyone who's contributed. And uh, you can also help us out by simply just pushing the like button. With less than uh, 12 and a half minutes to the launch of the Falcon 9, let's take a look at the uh, cargo that is loaded aboard the Dragon vehicle. There's a total of uh, 6,263 pounds or 2,841 kilograms aboard the uh, capsule. The, uh, these resupply missions are crucial to keep the space station crew fed and uh, providing them with uh, new scientific experiments to work on. And you can see from this, uh, this list here that the, there's the crew supplies, which on this flight also uh, includes some fresh coffee. Inside the uh, Dragon trunk, which is the cylinder at the uh, base of the uh, Dragon, there is also a rather large piece of uh, equipment inside that unpressurized compartment. There is uh, 1,391 pounds or 631 kilograms of uh, cargo, and that is uh, made up of a pump module that will be used for the space station's cooling system. That pump module is actually returning to space. You can see here the pump module uh, being um, maneuvered by an astronaut 
on the final space shuttle mission, STS-135. Um, that mission which flew in July 2011 picked up the uh, pump module and returned it to Earth. It's now been refurbished and uh, will fly back to the space station where it serves as a a spare. It's uh, not actually going to be installed. It will be removed from Dragon's trunk on March 25th if all goes according to plan with today's launch. And then it will be attached to an external stowage platform outside the space station on March 26th. And that will be available should there be any problems with the the pump module that provides the cooling system for the space station. The space station has two separate cooling systems. And uh, this uh, module is uh, a uh, crucial spare that will be delivered on this flight. Let's take a closer look at the Falcon 9 vehicle. It stands 70 meters or 229 feet tall and has a diameter of 3.66 meters or 12 feet. The bottom two thirds of the rocket is made up of the first stage. Today's first stage booster has flown five times before and is designated tail number 1080 in the SpaceX fleet. At the base of the first stage are the nine Merlin 1D engines, which burn rocket-grade kerosene and liquid oxygen to produce 1.7 million pounds of thrust. The chill-down of those engines should be getting underway about now. Above the first stage is the interstage. This is a composite structure consisting of an aluminum honeycomb core surrounded by carbon fiber. In the inset image, you can also see the deployable hypersonic grid fins. These titanium winglets provide stability and steering for the Falcon 9 as it falls back through the atmosphere tail first like a dart. At the top of the interstage are three mechanical latches that are attach. Stage one, fuel load complete. And there we hear confirmation that the loading of RP-1 aboard the first stage is complete. They completed the loading of kerosene on the second stage uh, earlier in the countdown. The second stage nozzle is safely housed inside that interstage adapter until stage separation. The upper stage is powered by a single modified Merlin engine called a Merlin vacuum engine or MVAC engine. It's equipped with a large nozzle optimized for burns in the vacuum of space and produces more than 200,000 pounds of thrust. The MVAC engine burns the same propellant mix, kerosene and liquid oxygen as the first stage. After the uh, deployment of the cargo Dragon, it will fire again to uh, drive the stage back into the atmosphere where it will burn up and that reduces the risk of creating any space debris on this mission. 
And then atop the Falcon 9 is the Cargo Dragon itself. It will uh, dock with the International Space Station on Saturday morning. Falcon 9 tanks are pressing for strongback retract. Dragon is in terminal count. And we are uh, now inside five minutes. The Dragon has switched to internal power and the start of Strongback Retract is uh, approaching. Strongback is retracting. We're going to look for the opening of those clamps that you can see around the top of the second stage. And there they go, starting to open up. Now less than four minutes to the launch. T-minus three minutes and counting. We're approaching the point where uh, liquid oxygen load will be complete. Stage one, lock flow complete. There we have confirmation of uh, the loading of liquid oxygen uh, being complete on the first stage. We'll uh, get a call shortly that the second stage oxygen tank is full. Once again, liftoff for the Falcon 9 is scheduled for 4.55 p.m., just two minutes and three seconds away. Now less than two minutes left on the clock. Waiting to hear the completion. Stage two, lock load complete. And there we have it, the loading of liquid oxygen on Dragon the is in auto idle. second stage is now complete. The Falcon 9 is fully loaded with 1 million pounds of propellant. We're coming up on the point in the countdown where the Falcon 9's onboard computers will take control of out. the countdown. Falcon 9 will uh, start the pressurization of its tank shortly. T minus one minute. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. SpaceX launch director, go for launch. There we have the final go for launch from the SpaceX launch director. Do you mind thirty seconds? Twenty seconds. Let's listen in to SpaceX for the final countdown. Fifteen seconds. 
minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, and lift off as Dragon returns to Space Launch Complex 40. Vehicle is pitching down range. Falcon 9 has now uh, reached the point of maximum dynamic pressure. And back is chilling. We're hearing that the second stage engine has started its chill down process. Beautiful views here. These are coming from uh, Pete Carstens of Max Q Productions. Coming up on the separation of the first and second stages and the shutdown of the nine Merlin engines on the first stage. And there we have the shutdown. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. Confirmation of the separation. Beautiful views from the onboard cameras. And that condition. Stage one boost back startup. And we can see the start of the boost back burn. The Falcon 9 essentially performing a U-turn in the skies over Florida turning around to uh, head back to a landing here at Cape Canaveral, planning to touch down at landing zone one. Boost back burn uh, still underway. It's going to wrap up in uh, a few seconds. Well, it looks like we've had a uh, shutdown of the boost back Stage burn. one boost back shutdown. Those uh, pulses that you're seeing in this video. Both stages, nominal trajectory. Those pulses you're seeing in this video from Pete Costin's tracking camera are uh, cold gas thrusters, which are helping to maneuver the Falcon 9 as it uh, now heads back towards Cape Canaveral. Meanwhile, the uh, upper stage uh, continues to fire to place the Cargo Dragon into orbit. Now four minutes into flight. The uh, first stage is uh, still climbing 131 kilometers in altitude. Uh, starting to uh, slow as it reaches the peak of its altitude and it will then start falling back into the atmosphere. You can see uh, that view from the first stage cameras on the left and the upper stage on the right. The velocity is now starting to uh, pick up as the Falcon 9 booster begins to descend, and you can see it here in our tracking camera view. Of 
Also getting views from uh, Chuck Briggs. So you can see those cold ga gas thrusters firing to uh, keep the booster on target for its landing. It was just a short journey to space for uh, booster 1080 that's now on its way back. You can see the uh, speed picking up here as the Falcon 9 plunges back towards Florida. Still technically in space over the Kármán line, which uh, is marked at the 100 kilometer mark. You can see uh, some uh, pretty incredible views coming from our tracking cameras on the ground, showing the uh, pulsing of the thrusters. Hope to be able to uh, track the booster all the way down to the ground. Not always easy in the daylight. You can see the cape coming into view in this onboard camera image. We're coming up on the entry burn. That's uh, needed to uh, slam on the brakes as the... Stage one entry burn startup. And there we see the start of the entry burn. Beautiful images coming here from Chuck Briggs. You can see that booster sticking out from the fireball at its base. Stage one entry burn shut down. Stage one FTS has saved. Both stages, nominal trajectory. We'll be coming up on the, the landing burn, the final burn. The first stage is now at an altitude of about six stage kilometers. One transonic. Incredible tracking views from SpaceX here. See the cape coming into clear view. There's the start of Stage the landing, landing burn. burn. We'll also Stage hear the one sonic boom. Boosted 1080 is back Stage on the ground. One landing confirmed. Terminal guidance. Those sonic booms uh, just uh, sounded here at the Kennedy Space Center. Stage two FTS has saved. Meanwhile, the second stage continues uh, to propel the Cargo Dragon vehicle towards orbit. Deployment uh, is, uh, well, uh, follow after the shutdown of that second stage. And back shutdown. There we hear confirmation from SpaceX of uh, shutdown of the second stage of the Falcon 9. Nominal orbit insertion. And confirmation that they have reached the correct orbit. This orbit will put the Cargo Dragon on course for a rendezvous with the International Space Station on Saturday morning. We're now about nine and a half minutes into flight. The Cargo Dragon will separate from the second stage of the Falcon 9 at about 11 minutes, 48 seconds into flight. Hope to uh, get good views of that separation and we may see that pump module that I mentioned earlier that's being carried up inside the trunk of the Cargo Dragon vehicle. 
That pump is a spare for the space station's cooling system. Now 10 minutes into flight. Less than a minute to go before the deployment of the uh, Dragon vehicle from the second stage of the Falcon 9. I want to thank everyone who's uh, offered support during our broadcast today. I'm, uh, Apologies for not uh, giving everyone their kudos uh, just yet, uh, but uh, with uh, Will away, I am performing double duty today, keeping uh, all the video flowing into our uh, stream and switching views. So I uh, just wanted to uh, give a big thanks to uh, Heron, who uh, donated six euros and uh, Viper BT-124 for their... Uh, Dragon separation confirmed. We hear confirmation of Dragon deploy. We don't see video of that yet. Well, it's a shame we're not seeing the video of the deploy. It's uh, certainly a stunning view looking the other way, but it'd be very nice to see the cargo dragon as it moves away from the second stage, and uh, hopefully we will get to see some of that footage. Thanks also to Mel roberts Harold, one of our regular viewers who's checking in from Chicago. Thank you for your uh, support, Mel, and your $10 Super Chat. Also to Sunny V for your $10 Super Chat. Big thank you to Marcus Gallegos for his uh, gift of five Spaceflight Now memberships. If you uh, were lucky enough to get one of those, please be sure to thank Marcus. Well, we've not seen any video from the Dragon itself. We often uh, get views from the spacecraft. Hopefully we'll get to see the opening of the nose cone. The uh, nose cone protects the uh, docking mechanism at the top of the cone of the capsule. And uh, that opening sequence uh, should be underway. But we're not seeing a uh, video of that operation right now. Neither do we see uh, the separation of the dragon. These views we're receiving now are coming from the second stage. There are cameras on each side of that stage, and uh, the video feed rotates between those two views. So on the uh, left-hand side of your screen now, you can see the uh, Mission Control Center at Hawthorne in California. And on the right side of the screen is the Mission Control uh, for the International Space Station Program at the Johnson Space Center in Houston. 
where my colleague Will Robinson Smith currently uh, is working away, learning about the crew flight test for the Starliner vehicle. Standing by for any um, word from NASA or SpaceX on the nose cone deployment. Just to recap, the uh, Falcon 9 and Cargo Dragon lifted off at 4.55 p.m. this afternoon in uh, amazing blue sky conditions here on Florida's Space Coast. It was the first Cargo Dragon to fly from Pad 40 since 2020. Previously, only the first generation Dragon vehicles flew from that pad. This uh, graphic from NASA shows the burns that are required to maneuver the Cargo Dragon spacecraft uh, to its docking at the International Space Station. The Cargo Dragon uses uh, Draco thrusters that uh, use uh, hypergolic propellants. Those uh, phasing burns will be starting uh, over the next uh, few days before the final uh, close-in towards the space station. The Dragon is heading towards a docking with the zenith port of the International Space Station. Meanwhile, back at Pad 40, the strongback structure is starting to move back into position. This uh, is a fairly new process that SpaceX has adopted to help with the turnaround of the pad. You can see at the top of the strongback, those white structures jutting out from the top of the strongback. Those are part of the dragon configuration of the strongback. And uh, over uh, the next few days, those will be removed so the pad can be prepared for its next launch. Meanwhile, at uh, Launch Complex 39A, the strong back there is actually on its way down the ramp towards the hangar to pick up a Falcon 9 vehicle for a launch that currently scheduled for tomorrow evening, a Starlink mission. However, the uh, weather forecast uh, is not looking great for that particular mission, so we'll stand by for uh, any updates from SpaceX whether that launch will go ahead tomorrow. We're still uh, listening in, waiting for any updates from NASA or SpaceX on the deployment of the Dragon nose cone to expose the docking mechanism.
Uh, so reports that the operation to open the nose cone is underway, but that's still in process and uh, we yet to have confirmation that it has been completed. I want to thank Corey Tyler for a $1 Super Chat and Calistia Lee for a $20 contribution. Also, Don Pierce, who uh, adds another $2 to our tip jar. And uh, Steve Wilson with a £5 Super Chat. And a big thank you to FedEx, who has gifted a Spaceflight Now membership. Coming up on 22 minutes since the launch of the Falcon 9 and Cargo Dragon. We're now hearing that the nose cone is now fully deployed, fully opened. That nose cone will remain open until the uh, dragon begins its return to Earth. So this uh, cargo dragon will um, arrive at the space station's zenith port on Saturday morning. That uh, docking should occur around 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Astronauts Lauro O'Hara and Mike Barrett will uh, be monitoring the approach of the spacecraft. That docking will take place autonomously. And uh, the Cargo Dragon should stay at the space station for about a month before returning to Earth, carrying uh, some of the uh, critical science and hardware that uh, needs to be returned for uh, analysis or repair and refurbishment on Earth.
So with uh, 26 uh, minutes um, since the launch of the Falcon 9, let's uh, take a look at the uh, mission stats for this particular flight. It was the uh, sixth flight for Falcon 9 Booster 1080. It's uh, launching a mission bound to the International Space Station for a third time, having uh, previously uh, launched two Axiom missions to the International Space Station. This is the 313th Falcon 9 launch to date, the 27th Falcon 9 launch of this year, and the 256th Falcon booster reflight. It's also the 28th SpaceX launch of 2024, counting the suborbital flight of the Starship vehicle earlier this month. It's the 102nd SpaceX orbital launch in the last 365 days as it tries to ramp up its launch cadence. It's the 173rd SpaceX orbital launch from Pad 40. And the 228th overall orbital launch from Pad 40. And uh, it would appear that uh, NASA has uh, cut our feeds to the um, to the uh, SpaceX uh, pad cameras. So we'll switch back here to our view at the press site as we wrap up our coverage. I'd like to uh, thank you all for joining us. Special thanks uh, to Adam Bernstein, who was operating the uh, cameras here at the Kennedy Space Center press site, and our friends Pete Carstens and Chuck Briggs for uh, their work tracking the uh, liftoff with their big lenses and telescope equipment. Also, thanks to uh, Michael Kane, who's out in the field trying to uh, capture some uh, images of the, this particular launch. We look forward to uh, seeing what he may have been able to uh, get. And uh, you should uh, be sure to follow our team on social media. Well, Robinson Smith, who uh, right now might have his head inside a Starliner simulator or perhaps is sitting in mission control. He's uh, working in Houston today covering the pre-flight briefings for the first crewed Starliner mission, that Boeing capsule scheduled for launch uh, the 1st of May. And uh, our two photographers, Adam Bernstein and Michael Kane, be sure to follow them on uh, X. Those are their handles there. And of course, the main Spaceflight now, X-Feed, you can uh, follow us there and uh, get updates uh, on the space program and future launches. Just a reminder, if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button and the notify bell and you will uh, get notifications when we go live. Uh, we uh, hope to be live tomorrow night for a Falcon 9 launch of uh, Starlink satellites from Pad 39A here at the Kennedy Space Center. You can see uh, preparations um, continuing there for that launch. The transporter erector TE with the uh, launch mount attached is making its way down the ramp at that particular pad, heading towards the hangar on the right side of your screen with the SpaceX logo. And the uh, hangar door you can just see sticking out there is open, ready to receive that. The Falcon 9 will be supported hanging uh, in midair by a crane and uh, will be lowered onto the transporter erector and attached to 
the uh, reaction frame, the launch mount, that, uh, that dark structure you can see just uh, to the right of the Starship Tower here at uh, Kennedy Space Center. As I mentioned before, the weather forecast tomorrow does not look particularly wonderful. A uh, strong low pressure system is developing in the Gulf of Mexico and conditions are expected to deteriorate here at the Florida spaceport as that uh, low moves uh, northeast. Uh, we're expecting some gusty winds, showers and thunderstorms across central Florida. However, the uh, 45th Weather Squadron says there might be uh, some gaps in those uh, unfavorable conditions during the four-hour launch window for the Starlink mission. That launch window opens at around 7.55 p.m. tomorrow evening. And uh, as I mentioned just now, lasts about four hours. So the... The forecasters, uh, the Space Force weather forecasters, are giving a 75% chance of violating rules, so just a 25% chance of go conditions. The primary concerns will be liftoff winds, the anvil cloud rule, and the cu cumulus cloud rule. Those last two rules uh, are all associated with uh, the potential for lightning strikes. There's uh, a low to moderate risk uh, of uh, upper level wind being a problem. Say so, uh, tune to uh, Spaceflight Now and hit that subscribe button so that you uh, don't miss tomorrow's launch. Uh, and uh, we will uh, keep you informed on any developments uh, on that. And uh, we'll also be tracking the Cargo Dragon as it heads towards its docking with the International Space Station. So thank you once again for joining us for our live coverage. From NASA's Kennedy Space Center, this is Stephen Young.